So let's take a look at chromatin structure a little bit more carefully. This is how DNA is stored inside of the nucleus. It's stored in the form of chromatin. And chromatin is very orderly, it's very organized. Chromatin consists of DNA, which is shown in purple, and that DNA is wrapped around histone proteins. The histone proteins are in this sort of orange color. And the DNA wrapped around a histone protein is called a nucleosome. Nucleosomes are a very neat way to store the DNA. It helps the DNA to not get tangled, helps it to take up less space, and uh, this is a good thing as far as cells are concerned. So when it comes to gene expression, if the DNA is wound very tightly around uh, histone proteins, if it's packaged up into nucleosomes like this, this is a very tight structure. This is something that it's really hard to express genes from. There's just no way to gain access to the DNA and get the strands to separate from each other. So it's hard to start uh, gene expression in this form. So if a cell is going to express a gene, what it has to do is make this chromatin relax. And the way that it can do that is by coming over and adding acetyl groups, chemical groups called acetyl groups. Um, acetylation will cause the, the nucleosomes to roll apart from each other, so it makes a little bit of space in between the nucleosomes. And what that does is it opens up a region of DNA. Now we can have access to this region of DNA. So the gene that is in this area could now be expressed. If we were to perhaps add another acetyl group right here, that would cause this nucleosome to roll further to the right. So then we could access that gene right there. So cells have ways of controlling which genes are being expressed. And then when expression is finished, um, the cell can remove the acetyl group, so deacetylation will take place and the structure will roll up very tightly again, the chromatin becomes more compact, and those genes are no longer expressed. So very, very careful control is possible inside of cells. Looking in a little bit more detail at the process of transcription, so how are genes actually expressed? This involves a number of special regions on the DNA. Usually, uh, well, for a given gene, there will be a start location, a start region, a beginning of the gene, and there will be an end of the gene. Okay, so start and end makes sense. Proteins have a, a first amino acid and a last amino acid. So there's a start and an end to each gene. Um, but to, in order to get transcription going, this actually involves other regions of DNA outside of the gene. And if we look just upstream of the gene, there is what's called a promoter region. This is a region that helps um, signal enzymes, helps them to know where to bind to the DNA um, so that they can find that start region. Okay, so there are promoter regions, and then there are also transcription factors. These are other molecules that come and bind to the promoter and again, facilitate binding of enzymes like RNA polymerase that are needed in order for transcription to take place. So lots of different players acting together in order to get this to happen. RNA polymerase, this is the actual enzyme that carries out transcription. This is the enzyme that builds the RNA molecule using DNA as a template. So it has to be able to break hydrogen bonds and DNA, and it has to be able to attach RNA nucleotides together. I mentioned splicing earlier. Here's a schematic to go along with it. Okay, so once we have carried out transcription, here's the DNA, um, here's the, the RNA molecule that gets produced from it. That RNA molecule can be modified in a couple of different ways. It has regions called introns, and those introns can be cut out of the RNA molecule. They can be removed and then the rest of the RNA molecule gets joined together. So the exons get joined together and so you can see here the mRNA, the final mRNA, it's a little bit shorter than the initial RNA molecule. This is called pre-mRNA. It's not quite finalized yet. This one is longer. This one is shorter because it's had some sections removed and that's called splicing. Just a reminder, there are different types of RNA. We just mentioned pre-mRNA and mRNA. We will for sure be dealing with mRNA in this class. Uh, what happens next after transcription is that that mRNA molecule has to head over to a ribosome to get translated. 
and this is where we have tRNA coming into play. tRNA is the molecule that carries amino acids over to ribosomes. tRNA, if we were to iron it flat, it has kind of a T shape to it. Uh, and again, one end is capable of connecting to an amino acid. There's an enzyme that carries out that, that reaction, attaching amino acids to tRNA molecules. Um, anyway, I would like for you to know that tRNA carries amino acids to ribosomes. And then we already mentioned rRNA. This is ribosomal RNA. This is what ribosomes are built from. Last on the list, interfering RNA. We won't be dealing with this one very much in this class. This is kind of more of an advanced topic, uh, but these are small pieces of RNA that can um, modify gene expression. And that's about all we're gonna say about that in this class.